Right. This is a contactor. The coil that activates the plunger that closes the internal contacts is a 24 volt coil. It's written here, 24 volts. Um, supply to that coil is between these two terminals here, A1 and A2, so that's where your 24 volt uh, AC DC circuit um, runs across. That will be your controls that activates your contactors for your uh, four pole. This is a three phase contactor, so you'd have your, your L1, L2, L3, live one, two, and three, and your output side for each pole, T1, T2, T3. You've also got the additional pole here, 13 and 14, which on the control circuit this came out of, uh, probably pulls in some other kind of uh, control device. Um, this contactor is a molar contactor. It's a very old contactor, out of date. Um, it's a 20 amp contactor. Just about there, if you can see here, it says 20 amps. So it's a 20 amp contactor. What you've got to remember when you're changing contactors is to match the rating as the contacts inside are not made to carry um, the amperage across the contactors when they make. This is the new contactor, um, slightly smaller in size. Um, it will fit. What you need to make sure is that you select the same type of connection. If it's going into an electrical panel, this is a DIN rail connection. So this will fit, this new one will fit in our uh, panel. You can see they match up nicely connector so that will slot nicely back in our cupboard um, so this is the new one uh, it's a 25 amp contactor it's a 24 volt coil that's the activation coil if you see on the diagram on the front here between a1 and a2 and that's the plunger that pulls in our contactors um, so again we've matched it with a four pole contactor one two three four outputs one two three four um, our activation coil our contactor coil sits between these points here. If you can see where it says A1 and A2, so slightly different from um, the old, which has got your A1 and A2, A1 and A2 here. But as long as you replace this A1 with this A1 terminal here, and goes without saying A2 here, we'll wire that into our A2 terminal here. Um, and then same again, your live contacts one, two, and three. Your live contacts, one, two, and three. Again in here, one, two, three, five. These are numbered slightly differently, but the same principles apply. Current traveling from one side of the contactor to the other on all your individual supplies. This isn't like the old style contactors, which you can manually force in the, the contact in the center here is never a good thing to do anyway as you're sort of forcing the motor to run outside of its control parameters so the new star doesn't have that when it activates it does have an indicator um, not a light but a red indicator will flash up when the contacts are made inside so you can still physically see uh, one thing to consider with contactors is this was a 20 amp we've replaced with a 25 you can always go up with a contactor size um, they just get more costly but never go down because they're rated for the motor that they're starting um, so if it is undersized as I said previously you could be, uh, create an incident where you melt the contactor and that's potential fire risk so we'll get into the rest of the video of us changing these out section so this is like a mini buzz bar if you like which comes off of the main isolator which is down here so you get a phase coming off of each one of these so there's a free phase section here which is what I'm working on yeah so you got L1 phase L2 phase and L3 phase so you connect those to the top of your contactor and then the appliance that 
it's going to connect to goes onto the bottom of the contactor and then you've got like a 24 volt coil to activate the contactor as and when you need it.